Thanks for joining us again. Uh, a chance at another very good team coming in here to Bud Walton Arena. What's the thought process and, and goals and, and objectives as you get ready for this game? Well, you know, we've been a non-goal team for a long time now, so it's just keep doing what we're doing. Try to get a little bit uh, better at the standards that we've set. Practices have been good. They're spirited. You know, the things that only change really with us are our opponents. Now, we try to do the same thing over and over, so our opponent changes. So, in this opponent, you've got another team that was in that debatable eight from the NCAA, so they're playing with that similar chip on your shoulder. Um, very, very talented, balanced. They've got inside out, um, playing a, a power five league. Again, like I've been saying since the day that the draw came out, it's very obvious that our WNIT is not seated. Uh, I don't think you'd have seen these two teams playing each other until very, very deep. So uh, it's great that we can get a game like this in Bud Walton. Uh, the outpouring of, of support has been unbelievable. I just got a text that uh, J.B. Hunt has sponsored Section 122, and it's supposed to be sold out in full. And I know that there's a lot of other people that have sent us and some other people, some Tysons have bought out tickets. And uh, uh, our university uh, making it available to free for students. For U of A students, which is a tremendous show of support, and our kids feel it, and we're uh, looking forward to it. Obviously, uh, looking at TCU, you got some size. Yeah, something that's you know something that gives you problems. So it does, and it's size that we you know we know very well. I, uh, Amy Aconco was a freshman at USC when I was at Washington. I know what she's capable of. We. Uh, I watched Jordan Moore play uh, almost every game she ever played in, in the summer. So uh, they do a great job of getting in there. Uh, it's always a test for us when their two leading scorers come at those spots. So uh, I think we're equipped for it. I think we're ready to handle it. Um, I do think that forces them to have to guard us on the other end. Uh, teams have tried a variety of things to do that. So I think at this time of the year, it usually comes down to the team that is the best version of what they do. But certainly when we walk out there and our guys are back too. I'm going to tell you, this is a huge thing. Our, our guys practice squad is back. And I talk about them a lot, but uh, sometimes that gets uh, underestimated. Uh, we'll be able to work against bigger, faster, stronger athletes today. And I think that will help us in the preparation. Now, what problems does a, a quicker like Kiara give them on the other hand? Well, that's that. what I was saying. It forces them on the other end to have to get back in transition, change some matchups. One of them is going to have to try to guard Chelsea or one of their guards guards Chelsea, and then they have to guard Mason. So uh, it's always fun to see how other teams react to it. You know, uh, some people played uh, hybrid defenses. Other people started different lineups than they had started all year. Um, you know, I, I know Reagan's going to have a plan. Uh, their staff is – uh, we've always been on the road with those guys. I know what a good job they'll do. They won't come out and just try to be ordinary. They'll do something to make us um, be challenged on the offensive end. We will make sure Kayla, or I call them Kayla, Kiera and Taylor, uh, together do what they've been doing all year long, and that's run to the front of that rim every single possession and have that compounding effect that late in the game that maybe it affects them on the offensive end. So we're not going to depart from what we do very much. I'm sure they won't depart from what they do. UAB kind of threw everybody at, at Chelsea and paid for it. Do you look for anything different from, from this month? Maybe. You know, maybe they'll try that. Um, you know, I think a lot of people go with the theory of, you know, let that kid get as many as they want and try to stop the other ones. Uh, and, Right now, I think there's a lot of evidence out there that that doesn't work. Um, so I don't, I don't know. We're going to be prepared for whichever way they try to go. That's the, the whole key is to try to make the defense wrong. Uh, I think we'll see a variety of things. I think we'll see some man. I think we'll see some zone. I think we'll see some mismatched lineups. Uh, they may go try to go small. They, they haven't done that very often. But if they do, that will be a departure. Uh, from what they've done in their 32 games that they've played. So. Um, I, I, it's going to be interesting to see. I'm always intrigued to see what happens, but I, I can assure you now with the number of practice days we've had, they've, we've seen everything in practice. Do they, does the pace change? Do they want to, do they, you think they want a different pace? No, they try to turn you over. You know, I think they turn people over almost 20 times a game. I, I didn't do the exact math on it, but it's a big number. But the number that scares me is their steals, like the live ball turn in to, to baskets on the other end. So we got to make sure we value it. I, you know, we've, we've been pretty good at that. When we're not, we're not. 
so if if that's the one thing I expect, I I think they're going to test us in that area. You know, you look at that thing that Mal plays with on her hand, and I don't know how she can even dribble. So I think they may ch- test it. Um, but again, I think we've now got enough games under our belt with her having that thing on her hand that uh, we'll be okay with it. Is it a trapping? I mean, is that full court? What Not. Are, what it's three quarter court. Yeah. Three quarter court and trapping in the half court, um, aggressive gambling, trapping, running through passing lanes, simply trying to rip it out of your hands right in front of you. Um, they put it, and, and they've got Jordan behind there and Amy behind there to kind of protect the rim as well, so they can be aggressive. But uh, we'll value the ball, and if you know if we can take care of that, then we usually end up with a good shot. And if we keep shooting it like we have, then that works out to our favor. But I don't think they're going to let us stand there and catch it and shoot it. I don't think that's going to be the game plan. Can you talk about what Jalen Mason has meant for you for you guys, particularly this latter part here when they play? She's a surgeon. She just dissects what people give us. You know, I've always told people – we try to get as many point guards on the floor as we can. She's a point guard in the half court, and she makes such good decisions. She's an instinctive passer. Um, she's kind of like – she reminds me of Russell Wilson as a quarterback. She doesn't – she may not ever make that spectacular highlight play, but she makes the right read 99 times out of 100. Uh, she doesn't turn the ball over, um, and it gets where it's supposed to. So now all of a sudden if if you have spent your defensive time focusing on Mal or Alexis or um, Chelsea, then she's right there to, to really be that – uh, that surgeon that can dissect what you're trying to do, and we will use her. She'll be, she'll have the ball in her hands, especially if they go to their zone. She'll, we try to get it to her in the middle of the floor and, and let her go to work. How big is toll? Is toll free, especially with you know with them concentrating so much on Dungey? Um, difference maker. You know, I think we've had two or three consistent players. Sometimes the people that have, have that it's been has varied. But when she's doing what she's doing the last five, six games, I think you're now throwing your hands up going, well, what do we do now? Uh, we've, we've tried everything. Well, what do we do now? She's five out of six. She's, she had eight rebounds the other night. You know, she's uh, scoring in transition. She's getting in the paint and dishing it off to Karen Taylor for lay-ins. So um, her play late in the season, I think, has not been coincidental to our team play being very good. Mike, I've probably heard more conversation around town about your team in the last month than I have in mm-hmm. several months before. Do you get a sense of the building of, of a fan base or bringing more people onto the bandwagon? Yeah, it's obvious. You can feel it. Everywhere you go, uh, people are talking and stopping by tables and seeing our kids. Our kids are talking about it. Um, you know, the lines outside, <clears throat> uh, the people on social media, the, you know, the drive time radio, there's talk on there about it. And, um, all of those things are signs that there is momentum, but there's nothing like seeing them show up for the game. That's where, and, and I think it started the other night when we went to do that little walk that we do at the 30 minute mark. They, there's a rise and a standing ovation and a clap, and our kids felt that. So we talk about it all the time that it, it makes such a difference to experience this thing live and not watch it on your iPad or your iPhone or follow it on social media. It makes such a difference to be in the arena. Um, not only for them, but I think the experience is good uh, with, with what DJ Derek does and Elvis does with the timeouts. and the, In the last eight or nine games, I have caught myself listening to a song that DJ Derek has played, uh, whether it, he played a Copperhead Road, which is an old Steve Earle song, and um, the things that they do with the dance cams and the bringing the kids down onto the floor. and um, it, There is really a difference in experiencing it live and experiencing it in two dimensions on your flat screen. So... We've sensed it. Our players have sensed it. Um, and I'm excited our, this group of kids has got to experience it and hadn't had to see it build into something that's happening down the line two or three years from now. Uh, Mike Anderson being let go yesterday. What do you think about him and what he was able to do for that program? Um, you know, he's a friend of mine since the day we got on campus. Not only he, but Marshita. Uh, Welcome me personally, uh, Marshita, making sure – that I was taken care of knowing that I'm single and uh, needed things. So uh, their whole family reached out. His players have been at our practices religiously, uh, at our games supportively, um, and just going to be missed. I know that me personally, when you take a job like this, you know that 
there's always the potential. You want to do your absolute best, but you know there's a potential that someday it's not going to be on your terms. So it was a hard day yesterday for our kids. We had to stop practice. Our kids were emotional about it. Um, we all were. Uh, we share a building. We share locker rooms. Uh, we share space with a lot of people, not you know his staff, his uh, training staff, his athletic training staff, his weightlifting staff. So, um, you know, they were certainly part of the yesterday. We were we were affected as well, um, but we were very going to be very sad to see him not around those halls and his staff. Um, and we've got a real challenge to keep our kids focused on what we've got to do. Thank you.